How Communism Changed Sports. Now, that's you're probably going to say, hey, what the heck is going on over here? Communism, those damn guys are, you know, terrible. Well, sure, the communist system is terrible, and I'll be the first one to uh, stand up and say how terrible it is. But the point of this, of this uh, podcast here is to take a look at what communism made possible in the area of sport. That's the important thing we should look at. Not whether communism is good or bad. That's immaterial. It's bad. Period. Let's throw it away. But what did the uh, Soviets at that time under the communist regime, what did they do to enable the athletes to become so great? Here they were enough, uh, I was going to say a nothing country, uh, that's far from what it was. They didn't have any high level athletes. They had very few Oh, they had a couple on the uh, international scene back in the 20s and 30s, but they were relatively few. But when under the communist regime and a country was going strong, they wanted a good way of getting propaganda out. How can we tell the world how great communism is? Sports became the vehicle. So what did they do? They went to the uh, scientists they said, okay, you've t- they picked out the top physiologists, those who are interested in sports. Physiologists, biomechanics people, uh, psychologists, you name it. Everybody who can be involved in sports. And they said, make me an athlete. Make an athlete. And they established coaching institutes. And these coaching institutes were devoted solely to studying the sport. The biomechanics of the sport, the physiology of the sport, the kinesiology of the sport, everything involved in the sport, technique of the sport. They were highly, highly, highly educated in this area. In fact, I remember at various USA, USSR uh, track meets, how at that time, back in the 70s and even early 80s, many Americans would say, look how stilted the Russians are in their technique. They're very stiff. They're not smooth the way American athletes are. I know it's correct. But see, when you're learning technique and you already have an adult, you're not going to get the smoothness. The smoothness comes with the years of participation. But the key factor here is they had these athletes that had the technique. They developed the technique. The athletes learned the technique and the physical abilities that came with them. They were way ahead of the world when it came to development of the physical abilities. In fact, right now, and this is how it changed sports, right now you take a look at the training programs in the United States and and other countries. General physical development, getting in shape, being in shape, getting fit, this is the key factor that they all worked on and still work on today. This is what constitutes most of our training programs. However, for the Russians, this was just the base. You needed this just to get the body ready for the real training that went above it. This was their specialized physical training. Highly developed. And it took specialized exercises. Exercises that duplicated what the athlete did in the joint actions in execution of his sports. Sports skill. This hasn't hit the United States yet. It has other countries. Europe is pretty good at this area. But the Russians were excellent in this area. And even the Russians will admit this was the secret to their success. But the general wasn't there. So back to the original concept. How communism, if it wasn't for communism, this probably never would have happened. But the communist state, and this is the objective that they wanted. Money became no objective. Money wasn't important. So they had the money to develop these institutes, train these coaches, spend the money on these coaches. And then they became successful. And I've been to the Soviet Union, and if, if if you were with me at that time, back in the 70s and 80s, you would have said, you've got to be kidding me. They developed a world-class athletes in, the, in these conditions. You go to their gyms, you had to watch out where you walked, you'd be tripping on loose boards coming up. And this is where the elite weightlifters were. A volleyball match, international volleyball match. 
before he could start, they had to bring in the workers to nail down the boards. You take a look at their volleyball plays, even in that tournament uh, that I was at. Every kid on his Ukrainian team, it was held in uh, Kiev, every kid on a Ukrainian team had a different color socks on. Now, the national team, they all had the same socks because they had a sponsor. Uh, I think it was some Japanese firm that was supplying the uniforms and, and clothing for them. But it was deplorable conditions. Very primitive. See, they didn't have the finesse that we did, but we had those chrome and glass and mirrors. But we didn't have the training system. But we didn't have the ability to analyze the technique or the ability, and even to this day, See, we don't have all of this, but we're using many of the Soviet methods. Plyometrics, explosive training, some aspects of periodization. All of these are now being incorporated, or have been, and are being used by U.S. coaches. Because they're very effective. If they weren't effective, we wouldn't be using them. But it's only a drop in the bucket in terms of what else can be learned from them. So, without belaboring the point, if you want more information in this area, read uh, Secrets of Russian Sports Fitness and Training. There's a lot of great suggestions in there. And even more so, like I mentioned, plyometrics. We have a book, Explosive Plyometrics. So you can get a lot of great information on some of these new methods, or some of these methods that were developed by the Russians. See, and even plyometrics, we've mentioned this before in other podcasts. Don't be misled with the way it's being misled, with the way it's being used in this country. It's more jump training. Get the real plyometrics that they developed. And this is what made successful athletes. So it's important to get the right information. A lot of fallacies around Russian sports, or, or former Soviet sports. So get rid, don't, don't get into the habit of looking at these fallacies or disproving what people say or some people say, oh, the Russians only used drugs, they didn't do anything. No, that was far from what made the great athlete. But for, for, if it wasn't for communism, it never would have happened.